refraction. So we have three goals for this session. First, we'll define the index of refraction. Then we'll talk about a simple model of refraction. And finally, we'll go over Snell's law. And that's the equation we typically use to analyze situations where there is refraction. So what is refraction? Well, it's the change in direction, usually, that occurs when light passes from one medium to another. You don't always get a change in direction, but most of the time you do. And what uh, happens there is often determined by what we call the index of refraction. So when an electromagnetic wave, or an EM wave, travels in a vacuum, its speed is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, what we call C. And in any other medium, light generally travels slower than that. So the speed of light, V, in a material depends on the index of refraction. And our symbol for index of refraction is N. And that's the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the medium. So N has no units. It's speed over speed. It's C over V. So typically, we expect N to be greater than or equal to 1. Uh, that's because we expect the speed of light in a medium other than vacuum to be a little bit less, or a lot less even, than the speed of light in vacuum. N is not always greater than or equal to 1. There are special cases where it is not, but most typical cases are greater than or equal to 1. Okay, here's another view of the index of refraction. So, when light goes from one medium to another, uh, and the speed changes, then the wavelength changes. The frequency will stay the same. So the index of refraction can also be stated in terms of wavelengths. So here's another way to look at it. So we've got n is c over v, but c is f lambda. That's the wavelength in vacuum. Uh, v is f lambda prime. Lambda prime is the wavelength in the other medium. In this picture below, that other medium is glass. Frequencies are the same, so they cancel. So you can write the index of refraction in terms of wavelength. It's the wavelength in vacuum divided by the wavelength in the medium. And that's what that says. OK, and you should be able to see on the picture that uh, the wavelength in the medium is smaller than the wavelength in vacuum. OK. So what we're doing is we're taking our ray model of light and we're adding what are called wave fronts. And those are the purple lines. And you can imagine those as the peaks in the wave. OK, so, but it's typically our, our just ray model of light. OK, so here's some sample values of uh, n, the index of refraction. So vacuum, by definition, has an index of refraction of exactly 1. Water is about 4 thirds. Glass is about 3 halves. And diamond, 2.4. Uh, doesn't sound a lot bigger than vacuum, but that is one of the biggest indices of refraction that's out there. OK, and the corresponding speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 for vacuum, 2.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for water, 2 for typical glass. Of course, you know, the different types of glass, you wouldn't always be at 1.5, but 1.5 is a reasonable, typical value. Add diamond, 1.25 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So still wicked fast, but somewhat slower than it is in vacuum. OK, now we're going to just going to talk about a simple model of light as it changes from one medium to another. OK, so in the picture we have kind of this gray area, which is kind of a nice uh, paved parking lot. And then we've got some slower medium. Uh, it talks about a grassy field. I guess it must be Kentucky bluegrass or something, because that area is blue. OK, so here's our marching band going across the parking lot at a particular speed. when the rows of marchers hit the slow medium, they slow down, and that pulls the, um, the marchers closer together. And that's because of the decrease in speed that happens in the second medium. There is no change in direction there at all. Okay, So that's one special case where you don't get a change in direction when you're coming in perpendicular to the interface. That happens for light as well. OK, so what happens when there is a, uh, an angle change, well, let's see that. And that's what we call refraction, of course. So now we've got the marching band lines not parallel to the uh, interface. And so different parts of each row hit that slow medium at different times. 
and that actually causes the uh, direction of the marching band to change. You can see that angle change and that light does the same thing and we call that refraction. Okay, so we do in fact have a nice equation that happens and we'll talk about that. But typically when a ray of light uh, reaches an interface between two media, then two things happen. First, some light comes back. It reflects off the interface, so it comes back into that first region. And that just obeys the law of reflection. Theta 1 is theta 1. And then some light reflects, refracts into the second medium. And generally it does so at a different angle. It only goes in at the same angle if the two uh, materials have the same index of refraction. Okay, so that we can relate theta 1 and theta 2 by what we call Snell's law. N1 sine theta 1 is N2 sine theta 2. Okay, so N1 is the index of refraction of the first medium, N2 is the index of refraction of the second medium, and note that we are measuring our angles from what we call the normal, that is the line that is perpendicular to the interface, it's a dashed line on that picture. Okay, so just to summarize some key ideas, so here are two different cases shown. The top picture, we've got uh, light going from air and trying to get into glass, and this is typ typical of the situation when light comes from a high index of refraction medium and refracts into a lower, no, that's the other way around, comes from a low index of refraction medium and is trying to get into a high index of refraction medium, then the light bends toward the normal, so that's going from a fast medium to a slow medium. Uh, the bottom picture, that's the opposite. Okay, so here we've got medium 1, in this case, is the high-end medium, and medium 2 is the low-end medium, and then you'll see the light bending away from the normal. It doesn't go straight through. It's further from the normal than the straight-through line. That's what we mean by bending away or bending toward. In the above picture, there's the straight-through line. It's not along that line. It's closer to the normal bending toward the normal when you go into a, a um, higher end medium. Okay, the end.